The ball is in the air and it should be caught. This video is brought to you by Wicket Cricket Manager. We're at Headingley, the home ground of Yorkshire's Johnny Bairstow, and the person under the ball is the other keeper, you know, Alex Carey. You could tell by how nice his hair looks. This ashes has been a snail on a razor's edge, if that blade was earlier used to cut a line of cocaine. It has been a thrill almost all the way through. Every single test has been close, or tight, or fought, or sloppy, or gripping, and almost all of them have been utterly full of nonsense from beginning to end. The entire series has been full of cricket moments that would feel stupid in a made-for-TV special on the Ashes. I mean, the first ball was some kind of fever dream where Zach Crawley was suddenly the world's most dangerous man. It showed just how much that Australia and England had actually just swapped places at that point. England were now the beautiful, reckless idiots, and Australia were the careful, pragmatic warriors. And that first day ended with England declaring like someone pressed the wrong button on a computer game. The old heads cried, and the new kids rolled around naked in the jelly pool of baseball ooze that was modern cricket. It was that level of weird shit happening almost on every other day as well. For instance, that first day had Harry Brook essentially bowled off his own ass, and the second day had him bowling early on to Steve Smith. We should also mention Moen Ali's finger at this point. After Jack Leach broke down, England brought an IPL star to come in and bowl a ginormous first inning spell, and he didn't finish until it was essentially bone on ball. A country with basically no spinners was finding new ways to lose the ones they actually had. But the test was won by one of the worst tales Australia has had in generations, led by a Pat Cummings inning so extraordinary that England just put everyone out on the boundary and hoped it would all work. And in between the matches, the stupid just amped up a little bit. Ollie Robinson started his writing career for Wisden, where he shared secrets from the change room, with approval from the ECB. Like the immortal, feels like we've won lads, from Brendan McCullum. While Crawley played his second biggest shot in the Ashes, when he declared that England would win by 150 runs in the second test. I don't know, the math doesn't work. And England kept up with the wackiness when they selected Joe Root as their frontline spinner. Well, not frontline, but only spinner. And of course he was largely not important in that game, except for one over when Australia lost their collective shit and gifted him two wickets. And that wasn't even the weirdest bowling from England in this game, as their military medium militia went on the greatest short bowling blitzkrieg in slow motion that we have ever seen. And Australia were more than happy to join in with the bouncers as well, and we had the most short balls ever in a test match. So much so that suddenly Jimmy Anderson looked like a piece of pepperoni at a vegan restaurant. Like, is this how it ends for the grand old man of the wobble ball? Well, with Bairstow keeping up the stumps while Anderson lets the even slower bowlers rest for their next bouncer spell. And talking about bouncers, remember that when Nathan Lyon got injured, meaning that both teams had lost their best spinner, his last actual work in this Ashes was hobbling out to bat in fear of being timed out, and then England bounced him. Almost entirely without care that if they did actually hit him on the head and he was concussed, Australia would get another bowler for that most important last innings. But at this point, the umpires took the main stage. Not content enough to call every third delivery a no ball, they were now looking over the finer point of Mitchell Stark's body and his control of that body. Australian fans were very mad to find out that you cannot put the ball on the ground during a catch. Then Alex Carey gave the umpires a lot more fun. At first with his down the leg side keeping stance, that is the sort of thing that looks like it shouldn't be okay, but is actually more than fine. And then with his legal stumping of Johnny Best though, which obviously exploded all of cricket. You, you may remember that one. At that point, England fans were very mad to find out that leaving your crease when the ball is live can lead to you being dismissed. Of course, it didn't stop there because Stuart Broad came out, cricket's troller in chief, and he said to Alex Carey that he may be remembered for that one bad thing he did. But it didn't stay on the field because some men in the long room were very, very upset that themselves, their father, their father's father, their father's father's father, and all the landed gentry that ever were involved in Lords spent all of their time making sure that women weren't members, but forgot that they actually had the power to fix the laws of cricket. Many of those members, of course, would have entered the ground via the Grace Gates, a bloke who more or less did exactly what Carey did. Instead of seeing any rationality, the members got as red in the face as their trousers were, and they heckled the Australians. They were so upset at the Aussies for not following the spirit of cricket that they abused the Australians in true spirit of cricket style. At this point, we should have been talking about what Stokes was doing on the field, which was just some of the best hitting and one of the greatest test knocks you will ever see. Or even just laughing as Jimmy Anderson charged down the wicket and got hit in the face by another bouncer. And no one even stopped to point out that Zach Tradamus was off by 103 runs in his prediction, or the fact that he was wrong 
pretty much once the toss was done. But instead of talking about the actual cricket, the next few days we're talking about the spirit of cricket. A concept so important to the lawmakers of our game that they had to make it double space just so it could fill out an entire page. And in the middle of all this, Jimmy Anderson got dropped, or rotated, or rested, but no one noticed as Alex Carey was roasted, and the Australians had to find new drinking buddies, as the English non-cricket media lost their collective minds over a stumping. I turned up on TV a few times, and in one interview, the host chastised me for not taking the legal stumping as seriously as I should be. The story on before me? That was the French riots. And the Prime Ministers got involved as well. If anyone would be an expert in a nebulous concept like the spirit of cricket, it would obviously always be a politician. Well done to those beacons of honesty and respectability for finally fixing cricket. At this point, it was hardly worth Australia playing on in this series at all, after they lost the first test on the Baz McCullum metric, and then they lost the second one on moral grounds. However, both teams actually turned up to Headingley regardless. And the Ashes was about to get even more exciting by the addition of Mitch Marsh. That is not a sentence that I ever thought I would read. But the first-class cricket avoider crushed the life out of England and saved Australia from the sort of collapse that you don't come back from at Headingley without Stokes, Matthews or Botham. But then England completely stumbled as Steve Smith took more catches in one innings than he has runs in this series. That is not a factually correct statement. But Mark Wood's bowling and batting was very, very fast. It was like he started a lit firecracker up his ass just to see what would happen. And it was lots of sixes and lots of wickets. And then Ben Stokes bashed Australia again when there were no other options left, as is his wont. That he did this with a buggered buttock just added to his legend. But Australia still looked like getting a pretty tasty lead until they had to come out and bat in the clouds at Headingley. And England bowled very, very well to everyone not named Travis Head. Again, we saw the nine fielders on the boundary. At the end of any sentence I've said, you can add the phrase, and the entire field was on the boundary, and you're probably making it more accurate. England made the tricky but gettable chase look easy, hard, and weird all at the same time. Mo and Ali's second Ashes comeback this series had him batting at number three, which is probably the way this series needed it. But by not promoting the Nighthawk to bat, England lose five banter points. But Australia did fight back and kept themselves in the game, largely because Mitchell Stark seemed to unleash and perfect all at the same time the three-quarter seam wobble ball as England's best batters kept getting caught down the leg side. Stark even took a wicket while running into his captain while he was taking the catch, because apparently we needed to tick that off of this wacky Ashes bingo. But Stark also got out Johnny Bester. And I could have mentioned him at any time through this video. He was glorious on day one of this Ashes. He had the top down on his convertible. He was driving through the mountains, blasting out his favorite tunes with the love of his life at his side. But sadly, the car broke down, then rolled off the mountain. He ran out of food. His partner was eaten by a bear. And the only cabin he could find in the woods was possessed by an ancient vampire family who hated wicket keepers. And then right at the end of this game, Mark Wood gets a top edge and the ball is flying high in the air. And who is the man tracking under it? that will put England eight down and maybe also three down. It is only the other keeper who was outbatted, outcaught and outstumped Johnny Bairstow, all with a much tighter hairdo. It would have made sense if Kerry took the catch running directly at the heading Lee Faithful, who loved Yorkshire's Johnny Bairstow. Instead, he dropped it and he didn't just drop it. He took it away from Boland, who should have gone for it. Johnny Bairstow and England ran screaming naked from the cabin in the woods in the middle of the night to survive for one more act. We'll see you at Old Trafford.